Our scripture reading this morning comes from Jonah, uh, verses, uh, chapter 3, verse 10, and then 4 to 11. When God saw that they did saw what they did and how they turned away turned from their evil ways he relented and did not bring that on them destruction as he had threatened but Jonah but to Jonah this seemed very wrong and he became angry he prayed to the Lord isn't this what I said Lord when I was still at home that this is what I tried to forestall by fleeing to Tarshish I knew you that you are a gracious and compassionate God slow to anger and abounding in love a God who relents from sending calamity. Now, Lord, take away my life, for it is better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, Is it right for you to be angry? Jonah had gone out and sat down at a place east of the city. There he made himself a shelter, set in its shade, and waited to see what would happen to the city. Then the Lord God provided a leafy plant. He made it grow up over Jonah to give shade for his head and to ease his discomfort. And Jonah was very happy about the plant. But at dawn the next day, God provided a worm, which chewed the plant so that it withered. When the sun rose, God provided a scorching east wind, and the sun blazed on Jonah's head so that he grew faint, and he wanted to die, and said, It would be better for me to die than to live. But God said to Jonah, Is it right for you to be angry about the plant? It is, he said, and I am so angry I wish I were dead. But the Lord said, You have been concerned about this plant, though you did not tend to it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and died overnight. And should I not have concern for the great city of Nineveh, in which there are more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and also many animals? This is the word of God for the people of God. So we often consider the story of Jonah primarily for the wonderful imagery of him being swallowed up by that giant fish or the whale. And it's a story that I know all of you that have come up through Sunday school will be well versed in. We discuss how God called Jonah to go to the city of Nineveh. And I have to tell you, I've said Nineveh 6,000 times in my head this week, hoping that I make sure that I pronounce it right every single time, but I'm likely to miss it at least once. For some reason in my brain, it doesn't come out right. So the city of Nineveh, and he tells, he goes in to tell them that they need to repent and follow the Lord. And God tells Jonah to do this because the wickedness of the city had come to God's attention. Now, if we consider what happens to a city when wickedness comes before, their wickedness comes before the Lord, the thing that pops into our mind probably most readily is to think about the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah. And Jonah would have known that story of how God destroyed Sodom and Gomorrah because of their wickedness. So wouldn't a prophet, a follower of God, want to go right to the place, right to Nineveh, and try to save them from such destruction? Well, the answer is no. He does not want to go to Nineveh, and he does not want to save those people from their destruction. So why then wouldn't Jonah want to help these people? Well, to begin with, Nineveh was a pretty rough place. It was the capital of Assyria, and the Assyrian people had long been enemies of the Israelites, as we find a lot of people were long the enemies of the Israelites. But the Assyrians were known for their military might and their conquests. And to get a better idea of where Nineveh would have stood, uh, and today, it was located across the Tigris River from what is now modern-day Mosul, Iraq. So Jonah may not have wanted to go to Nineveh, partially out of fear for what might happen to him if he did go there. He would have been walking into a very large city, one that it said that it takes at least three days to walk across. And it would have been filled with people that hated his people. And he was to begin telling them that everything they were doing, the way that they were living, was wrong. And I want you to consider that for yourself. And let's think of it in a little bit more modern terms. You walk into the heart of Philadelphia wearing your Dallas Cowboys jersey. 
and you tell everyone that you meet in Philadelphia that they are rooting for the wrong team and that cheesesteaks are gross. Not only are they rooting for the wrong team, but if they don't agree to start rooting for the Cowboys, their entire city is going to be destroyed. How quickly do you think things would go downhill for you inside of Philadelphia if you did that? And see, this would only be over a sports team. Imagine if you walked into a place and you told them that everything they're doing is wrong. So it's understandable for us to think about Jonah being afraid to go to Nineveh for this reason. However, self-preservation was not the only reason that Jonah wasn't willing to go to Nineveh. You see, he didn't want to go there because he didn't want those people to be saved. They were the enemies of his people, and they had been fighting for many years. So Jonah was not willing to take the message to Nineveh because he didn't want them to be spared. He was holding on to such hatred for those people that he was willing to go against what God commanded him to do. Well, we know how that works out for him. He runs away and ends up in the belly of a great fish. And after praying to the Lord for deliverance and being freed by the fish, then he decides, boy, I better go ahead and go to Nineveh like God told me to. So Jonah does go to Nineveh and he begins to preach, telling them that they need to stop being wicked or God is going to destroy them. And the message eventually reaches the king of Nineveh. And he immediately listens. He takes off his fine robes, he puts on sackcloth, and he orders that everyone else in Nineveh do the same, and that they begin to fast and to repent and turn back or towards the Lord. And so this is where our scripture gets picked up today. They follow what they're told to do, and God shows them mercy. He does not destroy the city. And Jonah should be really happy, right? He did what God asked him to do, and he wasn't beaten to death in the process. And over 120,000 people were saved. Well, Jonah is not happy. He says to the Lord, I knew this would happen. I knew that you were going to spare them if they decided that they'd turn away from their evil. And I tried to tell you that when I was back at home. And now I think it would be better for me to just die. I think it'd be better for me to die instead of having to live with the fact that I played a part in helping the people of Nineveh. And so he sits outside the city and the Lord has a plant grow for him to provide comfort and shade. And overnight the Lord sends a worm to destroy the plant. And again, Jonah gets upset saying, oh, I should just die. And when I think of Jonah saying this to God, doesn't he sound like a petulant teenager? Oh, things are so terrible. Oh, I'd, I'd rather die than have to do blah, 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 blah. And the Lord again speaks to him. He says, why are you upset? You didn't grow the vine. You didn't tend to it. It sprung up overnight and died the next day. And you did nothing to it. So why are you so mad? And God says to him, I shouldn't I be upset over the people of Nineveh? The 120,000 souls that live there? People that don't know their left from their right? That don't know what they were doing was wrong? And the answer from Jonah is not recorded. Though I'm guessing if he's continuing on the lines of what he had done before, he just simply asked to die instead of having to go on. But the thoughts of God are clear here. I care about other, others besides just you, Jonah. And I care about others besides just the people of Israel. And while I do love you, I love them as well. So what does this mean for us in our lives today? I think we can find ourselves in the same place that Jonah is, or was. We find ourselves, at first, sometimes being afraid to take the gospel of Jesus to others. And I think, once again, we can understand this because we live in a world today where speaking out about the gospel can often make people look at you in a different way. You may be considered a nut to some people, and you may be instantly considered intolerant by others. And there are even instances where you may be concerned about your livelihood because of your willingness to speak out for Jesus. Now, I think that we need to remember that we are called to be a witness for Christ. And we are called to witness for him in all things. 
and the ways we act and in the ways we speak. But still, it's understandable that sometimes we fail. After all, we are human and we do make mistakes. However, my encouragement to you is this. We find this in Acts, and it's spoken by Peter and John after they're arrested for speaking about Jesus after they've healed a man who was crippled. And I'm just going to paraphrase it here. Am I, am I to obey you, the judge, or am I to obey God? So they say, am I to be silent because the authority or society tells me that I should be silent? Or am I to speak boldly about Jesus Christ because that is what God has told me to do? And this should be a constant reminder for us that God calls on us to boldly proclaim the message of Jesus. He calls us to not, he calls us to let all that we know that they are to repent and be baptized in the name of Jesus. And I also like to think about our brothers and sisters around the world who risk their lives and the lives of their family when they speak out for Jesus. And I like to use that to remind myself that if people can be that brave, then surely I can stand some people looking at me differently when I tell them about Jesus. Or perhaps losing a friendship because I'm willing to share the gospel with people. And it's my prayer that we remember this the next time that we have the opportunity to tell someone about Jesus. But the more serious issue for us to consider is this. Are we withholding information about Jesus because we don't want someone to be saved? Just like Jonah did with the people of Nineveh. Are we not taking that message to them for some reason that we hold in our heart? Withholding information from someone can have serious consequences. And there are times that people will go to the doctor and they withhold information from that doctor, whether it be out of shame or embarrassment. And the results are that they may become even more sick or even pass away because they weren't willing to be forthright with the doctor. And in our family, and I'm sure for you, those of you that have children or, or raise children, you know that if uh, a children's question about something that they have done and they choose not to tell you the truth or they choose to withhold the truth from you in some way, I'm sure for you guys and for our kids, they know that the punishment is always greater in, in much worse than if they had just told us the truth in the first place. But when it comes to someone choosing to withhold the opportunity of salvation from someone else, for whatever the reason, the consequences for that person are eternal. So are you finding yourself withholding the gospel of Jesus Christ because you don't think someone is worthy of hearing it? And this is something that we all have to look into our hearts and answer for ourselves. Am I willing to carry, unwilling to carry the gospel to someone because they've wronged me in the past? Am I unwilling to carry the gospel to someone because of where they're from? Am I unwilling to carry the gospel to someone because of the color of their skin? Am I unwilling to carry the gospel to someone because of their political affiliation? And if you answered yes to any of these questions, just like Jonah did, you need to remember that salvation that is offered by Jesus is offered to all. And we need to remember together that Jesus didn't come just to save you and to save me. He didn't come just to save people that were rich or people that were poor. He didn't come to save just people that were saints and people that are sinners. He didn't come just to save people that are one color. And he didn't come just to save the people that were born in America. He came to save us all. And his salvation is given freely to all those who believe. So if that is true, then it isn't up to us who we take the message to. It is to be given to all. That message of salvation is to be shared freely by us, regardless of how we feel about the person that we're sharing it with. And this is the message that I believe God was trying to give to us through Jonah. You need to be willing to take that message of salvation to anyone and to everyone that you meet. Amen.